What's up everybody, Zach here, and I am playing Back to the Future Episode 5. With me though is Blake, so I'm not by myself, I'm not just talking to myself. I actually have someone here. Blake, how's it going? It is going great. How are you, Zach? I am pumped because this game is really fun. I like it so far until at least the game broke on me. A game-breaking glitch. All the settings are correct. I want to say to the viewers, it would mean the world to me if you could just like and favorite this video. If you don't want to favorite it, just I'll settle for a like, that'd be wonderful. And then subscribe to our channels, because we have more Back to the Future content than pretty much every game we're covering. Blake, you had no interest in this game, right? No, I had a little bit of interest. <laughs> a little bit of interest in the concept. We are going to shut up, though, for the cutscenes here, because I refuse to speak over dialogue. At least meaningful dialogue. So we'll see you at the end of this. But none of the dialogue so, in this game is meaningful, so it doesn't fair. really matter. That is not fair at all. This is a universal <laughs> partnerships and licensing production. That's nothing but meaningful dialogue <laughs> in this game. October 1931. Hint at the date. So, I'm a firm believer in father-son relationships. I don't know about you, Blake. No, not no, at all. Just abandon the relationship. Yep. You want him to stay right there. I'm going to say make peace with your dad, because that's important. You know, you really should try to work things out with your dad. If you give him a chance, he might just surprise you. I'll keep that under advisement. But first, I need you to perform an important mission. On the table next to my law books, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh, I think I see it. Is it glowing? Yeah, is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. Alright, so this is an adventure game. If you guys are clueless as to what that is, just look at any of Telltale's games. So you won't see that much action in this. Just cutscenes. Jeez, Doc. Watch out, you almost ran me over. Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Did he fix the time circuits? I don't really care. I want to know where he's been. Where have you been all night? I've been driving around, looking up old friends, thinking things over. Okay. So is that what I'm destined to build for the expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And, and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Doc? I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was science! So, if there's anything we learned about personalities from L.A. Noir, it was that shifty eyes means that you can't trust a person, right? Well, I'm already confused. Who is this guy? I thought this was Emmett. This, this is Emmett. It's a different time period, Emmett. Oh. It, see, you're, you're picking this up in episode 5. You know, you didn't see the previous episodes, so that's why it's not making very much sense to you. Science means everything to everyone, though, right? So Not to me. Not to you. I'm all about math. But it should, it should make some sense to Doc Brown, so that's what we'll pick. You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. My younger self loves science, 
But if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. I really like how this game just shows off real life. My younger self loves science. Then when he gets old, what do, you know, old people don't care about science, right? Yep. Most of the dialogue in this game does just go down the same path, so it doesn't really matter, which is kind of a disappointment. But his path is set. Even so. if you screw up Emmett's chances at the expo, there's no way he'll give up science now. He's too committed. You don't know me like I do. After he fails at the expo, he'll be in need of comfort. And Edna's already arranged a romantic little trip up to the lake. Ain't nothing like a woman. Can't you can't want Emmett back with Edna. She used you to turn Hill Valley into a police state. She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. But if I don't become a scientist, she'll never get the chance to vent her crazier ambitions. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure, Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Ah! What the hell? Where'd it go? I'm a little confused as to where Doc Brown went as well, he doesn't seem <laughs> too concerned. <laughs> so we're off to find the static accumulator. Actually, the conversation about women it kind of reminds me of Back to the Future Part 3. Oh, come on! Where he just is going to abandon everything for the woman he meets in the Old West. Here, little static thingy. Refe reflex is like a puma. <laughs> it's possessed by Doc Brown. <laughs> so when all else fails, climb a pole, right? Good skill to have. You have to wait till it's gotcha. right by you. You try to grab it when it's away, it won't work, and you have to just keep going into it. That's it for that part. Now we're off to the, the fair, the science fair. Everyone's favorite thing. Your favorite the thing? The expo? Yeah. It's a science fair. Sounds like middle school. <laughs> I don't think the doc's gonna win. Maybe third if he's lucky. He doesn't even show up. <laughs> the future is coming today. There's a shiny new tomorrow on the way. A day of invention is at hand. It's a mystic futuristic wonderland. Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see a dream or two. If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true. There is a world of wondrous wonder on display. Because the future is coming today. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all, but I thought you fired her. I found a loophole. What kind of loophole? Just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets, you know. All right, all right. Say, don't you have to get that whatchamacallit to Emmett Brown's booth? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. The future is coming. It's getting clear now. All right, so this is the first place that where it's actually kind of a puzzle and you have to really do some exploring. I'm just going to choose to talk to Artie. Hey, Artie, what do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure, but I was wondering. I want to know where Emmett is, because he just vanished before <laughs> my eyes. You haven't seen Emmett Brown, have you? Isn't he at his booth? It's the tall one over there. Well, he's no help. I don't care how to get the job back. There are a lot of pointless side diversions here, such as this man who wants to... Well, he's called a hostile guy. You can tell because he has glasses and a fedora. What's that in his hands? Um, that is some LG stuff that he creates. 
But he won't sell it to you because and he like is hostile waste you with you. He's a hostile system. guy. All of these places here require tickets, which we don't have yet, so there's no point of even trying. You just get stopped. And here he comes, right on cue. No doubt he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective, but you mustn't let your resolution waver. Hello, Callahan. You can tell that she's manipulative, Edna. Right yep. off the bat. And just bossing police around. So that's Emmett's wife or whatever? Girlfriend? Love interest. That's not a love interest anymore because she's evil. Um, where's Emmett? Where's Emmett? What? Is he missing? Don't you recognize a ploy when you see one? Now, do your duty. Oh, shit, that's gonna stop. Wait a minute, people. that's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. I just mean, really, when it comes to science or a woman, what's more important? Obviously science. Yeah, so. It was my plan to get him back to inventing what he should be inventing. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. I found out who Harry Callahan really is, and where he comes from. Is there something you want to tell me, Harry? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Shmirnov. Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo! Annie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? Sorry, uh, Yakov, but I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. Come here. <sniffs> Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. But she's been getting some clout in town ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And my future depends on making sure he doesn't. The chief reads her column religiously. And, well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well? I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better... Uh, where is he, anyway? Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. Yeah, those those names start to hurt. Radical subversive doesn't get much worse than that. So now the goal is to find some dirt on her. Maybe start with she's a Hi, slut. Trixie. That's techni to you, kiddo. We don't want to find Emma. Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know. Now what can I do you for? I want to know about the attractions, because we need to get into them to get the tickets that are required. So, which exhibits do you recommend? The most popular attractions are the Glass House, the Future Furnishings, and of course, Enlightenment Under the Sea. You know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself! Of course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. So that glass house she mentioned, that's the place where a lot of people are having Yeah, there's, there's a glitch in this game that people are getting stuck in the glass house. Hopefully we don't get stuck, and then you'll be able to follow this walkthrough to figure out how not to get stuck. But if we click, how do I get tickets, she gives us... How much are tickets? Aw, oh, put your money away. Here, you're kind of like family now, you know? Thanks. That's like freaking every ticket she has, too. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's four <laughs> attractions, and she just gives you a roll of tickets. Um, where is Emmett? She does not know where Emmett is. Can she? She can't. Pull, she's useless. So I'm gonna ask her how she got the job back. Already told me how you managed to get your old job back. He did. 
But it was supposed to be a secret. There's no secrets between us. He couldn't resist telling such a good story. Yeah? Still, I'd like to hear it again, uh, from your point of view. Uh, he didn't tell you anything. He's a really bad liar. Yeah. <laughs> you, could, you can just tell by his voice when he's lying. So we'll plead. Come on, Trixie. I'm dying to know how you got the job back. You won't hear it from me. I don't talk out of turn. I'm thinking he's, he said he found a loophole. Hole. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We're Thanks. done with her. Happy to help. She's of no use. There's going to be some child watching this video that you'll have corrupted. Yeah, but just that one statement gets him. We need to go into the house. The future house. Which is mildly amusing. I mean, I guess this stuff's really advanced for the time. Welcome to the world of tomorrow. Where a man what date did you say it was? His castle. Here, gratification is just always a push of a button away. I don't even remember, 1935 or something. Um, this is the only important thing in the house. I forgot what the red button did. In the house of the future, fresh fruit baskets will be replenished daily by fleets of fruit-bearing helicopters. Ah, oh, it's wax. So the blue button just highlights the entertainment section, which is it's very unimportant. It doesn't matter at all. Um, the important thing right now is the potted plant. You didn't mention this the green button, This plant doesn't though. belong here. There's nothing futuristic about it. The green button calls a telephone that we'll use in a little bit. That potted plant is significant, though, because we need to replace it. Do you have it with you right now? Yes, it's in my inventory. But there's this potted plant, which... Now, I'll click on it. A potted plant? You can s What's this got to do with law enforcement? A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tannen's speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants... We could have busted him a lot earlier. So the objective is to get dirt on Edna. So we'll switch the potted plants because if we don't switch out the potted plants, he won't let me take it. Looks like a badass there. What? What? What do you think you This is Techni Muse of Progress. Hoping you're all having a swell time taking in all the exhibits. Don't forget, you can purchase tickets to our main attractions right here at the information booth. All right. This is Greetings, a radio jukebox. of Hill Valley. Wow, that was a great greetings. Greetings! And then nothing after <laughs> it. A picture radio. It's like a television. Hiya, folks. So now we're going to go into the booth. If you go in here and try to call, you can't. Because it only receives calls. Is that where the green button comes in handy? Yes. You can call the booth. Okay. Call me a snoop. Snoop. That number is significant because we need to know what number to call. Another ticket? We're wasting another Welcome ticket. Disappointment. A waster. Alright, so now we're gonna push the green button to make a call to the booth where we just put the pot of plant. Future, phone conversations will be completed in the privacy of the personal phone helmet. 
Hey! Please recite the phone number you wish to dial. Or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. There is no point at all to call the Brown Estate because Doc Brown's not there, so... He won't answer and it's just useless. We call the phone booth of the future. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, where the future is coming today. This is Check Me News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? A bunch of different choices here. You can pretend to be yourself, which is pointless. Kid Tannen will just get you into an argument with her and... Some guy sounds good to me. Some guy. <laughs> Carl Sagan is who we want, because if we remember, Edna was saying how she talked to Carl Sagan, so we're going to impersonate Carl this Sagan. This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? Emmett's not there. We're going to talk to Edna. Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. Mr. Sagan! I didn't expect to hear from you again till after the expo. You didn't? Yes. Wasn't that part of our plan? Yes, our plan. About that plan. Okay, so. She will not reveal really anything about the plan except for what we already know. We know that she does not want Emmett to put on his invention, not put his invention on display or anything like that. She's not gonna... I guess, click where's Emmett. I seem to have momentarily lost track of Emmett. Do you have any idea where I might find him? You lost him? You were supposed to keep him distracted. Oh, I have been. He's just uh, wandered off. Well, go look for him. I've got my hands full with Parker. I don't know if anybody else noticed that there, the subtitle is actually off with what he said. He said I had been, and on the subtitle it said I am. That's just pointing that out. That's a big mistake. If we click lay off Yakov Smirnov, she just says... She concludes that Yakov is listening in on the call, and he's just trying to, you know, not reveal a plan at all, so it's useless. Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking, wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, uh, pin what on him, exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh... That was the dog's fault. If he hadn't come glumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away, and I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl, is somebody with you? No! It's just you and me. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women, flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Uh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. Oh, it's like he forgot to press Next record. Up on our roster, a man who saw the possibilities in pond scum. Welcome, Ernest Philpot. Thanks, Trixie. We got uh, some dirt on the bitch I now. I'm honored to be here today among all you people. Like the lady said, I labor in You the do have to record the conversation though, because if you're just listening to the conversation and you're not recording it, he'll just say it's my word against hers and who's everyone gonna believe so for sure you have to record it no i don't think i ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies i think a lot of people are going to be interested in that answer i like how he's able to jump to the exact spot he wants to be at 
right? Just by pressing the button. It doesn't have to listen to any of the other stuff. I also like how he's able to fit the potted plant in his jacket. Where is it? Till now, people haven't been getting the benefit of So we shall take that out. And oh, give it to the officer. Act casual. But sweet hey, hey, Danny. Do you mind, comrade? We're busy trying to protect the, the expo from America. the likes of you. This will only take a minute. That is chewy to the mouth. Our plant recorder. It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Listen. No, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned out all those stickies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. D Detective Parker, surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? You know, one of these days I should really stop falling for that. Hey, does this mean that the barricades can come down from Emmett's booth? Let's take that as a yes. Emmett's gotta be around here somewhere. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have, and it was very interesting. Huh. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon! So while our little investigation was going on, that guy was up there ranting about his LG and what one person was listening to. Hiya, folks! So that is now one objective out of the way. So is this the whole game right here? Are you just at the science fair, or does it it, it goes to the beyond other parts? that? Um, okay, that'd be a pretty short game. Yeah. This exhibit, Enlightenment Under the Sea, is pretty boring. You just get in the bulb, the floating thing there, and drop down, and then you just walk back out. Nothing really happens in there. You get to go into yeah, water. Excuse though. me, Mister. Dudo, Jacques Dudo, at your service. The important thing is, have you seen Emmett Brown? I'm looking for a friend of mine, Emmett Brown. Tall young guy, reddish brown hair. A uh, distracted look. That's him. Any idea where he went? He just passed by here with an older gentleman. I think they were headed into the house of glass. Great, thanks. Is the, that where we will be heading? Yes. Let's the hope. guy, though, with a helmet can spot someone and no one else can. No one else sees him. Is it the older version of Emmett? That he can spot, or can other people see that? Hey, Emmett, come out of there! Don't listen to him. Perfect. So there you see, Carl Sagan is really the old version of Emmett Brown, not actually Carl Sagan. Let's hope we do not glitch up here. Yeah, that'd be wonderful if we do glitch Welcome up the reach to see it. Atlas House of Glass, the future of domestic life. Okay, Emmett, let's get you out of here. Emmett! Emmett, don't listen to him. He, he's crazy. I'm still not sure about this business proposal, Mr. Sagan. Let me explain it again. Atlas Glass, unbreakable and soundproof. Soundproof glass, great. Our living space can be configured to meet the needs of any family. Need a private study? Simply slide the walls in, or slide them out again to create a spacious banquet hall. It's not glitched. So the first time that I played it, these handles would not light up at all, so you couldn't move them. And I do really enjoy... Ooh, a window. Emmett, get out of this place and back to your booth. You're gonna miss the demo. Come on, Emmett, look up here. Ah. I like how the... Come on. I like how the house kind of just rubs it in. It's soundproof. <laughs> you can't do anything about it. Oh, I 
doesn't work. I did something wrong. There we go. It's a it's a maze. Did that work? Do we think that worked? Yep. All right, making it through the maze. I have a hard time seeing how this could become a banquet hall. You just move stuff around and it does whatever you want. I think it actually would suck if this was your home. Doc Brown's pretty evil here, I think. <laughs> He's just completely knocking himself out. Oh, where'd he go? Gotta love secret doors. Yep. Damn it. Where did you take him now, Doc? The next exhibitor on our list is Officer Danny Parker of the Hill Valley Police Force. <gasps> Officer Parker is going to demonstrate a few of the many marvelous tools that our boys in blue will soon have at their disposal. The criminal element has truly met his match today. Officer Parker? Uh, it seems our next exhibitor is unavoidably detained, but I'm sure his presentation would have been both enlightening and exciting. Um, how about a round of applause just for the heck of it? This whole thing is so incredibly dull. Not the game, but just this expo. Like, there's nothing remarkable at all. As you can see, that's why tons of crowds of people showed up. Yeah, the, the, oh, disappointment. <laughs> Who yelled that? The guy, the guy in the. Those two guys right there. They're the two that yell. The exhibitors are moaning. All right, so this is where I'm just going to leave it off because this video's gone long enough. And then we'll just pick it up in the next part and you get to see what happens to Doc Brown and Emmett. You know, it's kind of confusing when he's yelling out Emmett. We yeah. have two Emmets there, but... Alright, hope you guys enjoyed it. Look forward to the next part.